every time I post a video about VS Code, I get someone in the comments saying, well, WebStorm has had that feature for 50 million years. Well, here's five things you need to know when you compare WebStorm and VS Code. What's going on, everyone? My name is James Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development topics, uh, especially a lot about VS Code, my favorite text editor personally. I'm not saying that should be yours. I'm not saying your decision is wrong. I'm saying that's my decision. That said, a lot of people jump into the comments of these YouTube videos and they want to share how other editors are better or they want to kind of prove me wrong by they've had these features for X number of years and all these different things. And I just want to have a little bit of a level set with two editors, VS Code and WebStorm and give you a few things you need to know when you compare them and why they're different and why you should expect them to be different. So the first thing about VS Code, extensions are everything in VS Code. With VS Code, just kind of bare bones, just the raw downloaded VS Code, you don't get a ton of functionality. You get a lot of really good functionality, but the, the additional functionality comes from extensions. The extensions, the plugin ecosystem with VS Code is huge. That's what I do a lot of my videos on. The last one that kind of triggered this video was on a code spell checker extension. And the comment was, again, WebStorm has had that for years. And that's the big difference here. VS Code is, is primarily dependent upon these extensions, whereas WebStorm has a lot of this functionality already built in, which makes you think that WebStorm is automatically better than VS Code, but that's not the case necessarily. I'm not saying it's not, I'm not saying it's not, not the case. I'm just saying that doesn't prove anything. And that leads me into number two here is that these are two different categories of products. VS Code is a text or code editor, whereas WebStorm is more defined as an IDE. Now an IDE, for those of you who don't know, is an integrated development environment, integrated meaning that all the functionality, most of the functionality that you could ever imagine and want, even if you don't need it, is already baked into the solution. So if you're looking for something that has a lot of functionality that's already baked in, it's already there, WebStorm is a great option for that. If you're looking for something that's highly customizable, that comes a little more bare bones, which means it's really lightweight, and then you only install the extensions for things that you absolutely need, VS Code is a great option. Not saying either one is better, I'm saying they're two different types of products, IDE versus text editor. Now I will say in a little bit of defense of VS Code, even though it's not kind of branded as an IDE, with the extension ecosystem, it has all the capabilities and functions that I'm used to from an IDE. If you have something that you're missing, let me know in the comments below, but there's nothing I need that I can't find through the extension ecosystem with VS Code. So when you look at like VS Code plus the extension ecosystem versus the features of WebStorm, they're pretty spot on. Again, if you have differences that you would like to call out, let me know in the comments. All right, so the third thing that you absolutely need to know, this is probably the most important, VS Code is a free open source project, whereas WebStorm is a paid product. Let me say it again. VS Code is free. WebStorm is paid. Doesn't make either one of them better than each other. It just means that VS Code is much more accessible to the average developer. Not many developers out there either have the money or want to spend $60 a year, which is what I have up here, $60 a year on a license for a code editor if they can get something that is 95% of, of the way there in terms of features and functionality for free. VS Code does everything that I want it to. I've never used VS Code and wanted to pay for something else. Now, that doesn't mean that paying for WebStorm is a mistake. I'm not talking bad about WebStorm. If you have the money and you have the features that you need or want or just think WebStorm is better, do you, that's great. But VS Code is free, which means it's more accessible to more people which does make it a great option, especially for people that are getting started and for people that just don't have the budget to spend 60 bucks a year on a text editor. Now, another thing to note, this is number four here, is that WebStorm is about five years older. So if you start comparing features, WebStorm has had this feature for so many years, VS Code just now got this feature, or however you wanna do this comparison, WebStorm is a bit older. So I found uh, the first release of WebStorm was in 2010. And I went back and did the first release of VS Code. I was actually at Microsoft at the time and I had no idea what VS Code was or what it would become or how it would be such a big thing for me in my career. But that came out in 2015. Five years is a relatively long time considering VS Code now has only been around for about six years versus 
the 11 years that WebStorm has been around, you could expect there maybe to be some feature parity, some things that WebStorm might have that VS Code won't. But again, really nothing comes to mind of things that I'm lacking in VS Code. But when you make these comparisons, just understand that they were created at different times and that one has been around longer than the other. And so, yes, it's very likely that WebStorm will have had features for longer than VS Code. Doesn't make either one of them more or less valuable at this point. It's just a little bit of a difference in when they were created. All right, lastly, this is mainly for people who think that uh, that WebStorm is the only decision and VS Code is not a reasonable or a decision that makes sense. Now, again, everything I've said today has been pretty unbiased in terms of just comparing and things for you to think about. I'm not telling you one is better than the other. Based on all the feedback that I see from people who use WebStorm, they love it. I also love VS Code. Neither one of those things is wrong for the other to be true. Two things can be true. So the last note I want to add here is that VS Code has about 14 million users. I found this article. I'll link to it below. As of February 2021, it's kind of hard to argue with VS Code's stance in the ecosystem of web development. If you watch any tutorials on YouTube or courses that you buy, probably the person who's leading that tutorial is using VS Code. You find more articles about VS Code. You find more top 10 extensions or top 10 features, videos and articles and things. You'll find a ton of resources about VS Code because its ecosystem is so, so big. I couldn't actually find a number. If you have one for WebStorm, a link to an article, make sure to throw that in the comments below. I couldn't find a specific number, but I just wanted to say, regardless of what the number is for WebStorm, people who think WebStorm is the only decision and VS Code is inferior, 14 million other people might disagree with you. It doesn't matter. This video is not here to tell you one is better than the other. It was just to give you a few things, five points that you should consider when you compare them. Now, at the end of this video, we can get to what your opinion is. Now, let me know in the comments below, which do you prefer VS Code or WebStorm and tell me why you prefer one or the other. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.